Today, we're going to be looking into two low-risk rental properties. Bob and Erica, this is your video. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I am your host, James Wise. Today, I am coming to you live from my home TV studio because we are not in the Holton Wise TV studio uh, with all the coronavirus stuff happening out there. But not to fear, folks, don't you worry. We still have essential field stuff out there handling things for you. So getting your properties under contract, opening escrow, closing escrow, handling full-fledged renovations, small maintenance issues, plunging toilets, leasing units, all that jazz. We still have staff out there working in the field, uh, even though Ohio is under a shelter-in-place order. A lot of that stuff is going to fall under essential workforce, and we are able to still do that, provide you guys with the services just our staff, you know, folks like myself or other members of the sales and media and the office team that can do the same level of work for you guys off-site, remotely, we are doing so. But uh, other than that, it's all systems go here in Cleveland, helping you folks invest. And uh, who I'm working with right now, I got Bob and Erica. You folks, Bob and Erica from Phoenix, Arizona, you guys are seasoned investors. You've got a 28-unit portfolio spread out across uh, the rest of the country looking to do some stuff in Cleveland. Bob, I believe uh, you and I, I'm, I'm fairly confident. I, I know where uh, you started watching our stuff. I feel like you and I have been uh, interacting on Facebook comments and things of that nature throughout a lot of the landlord groups and things of that nature. Uh, just so everyone knows, too. I do have a Facebook group that I started. It's the uh, Turnkey Property Management Mastermind. That's on Facebook. Uh, so if you guys want to join that mastermind, totally free to join the mastermind. You know, if you guys want to talk shop, things of that nature. Uh, you know, you don't always want to watch all the, the episodes of the Investment Properties for Sale show or the Tennis from Health show or the MLS Search and Analysis show. You just want to talk some shop uh, with other investors. Check out our mastermind. Um, that's on Facebook. I'll put a link in that uh, link to that in the show notes below. But uh, Bob, so yeah, man, you and Erica, you folks, seasoned investors looking to do some investing, understand that you've got 100K to play with. You're probably going to target uh, properties as cash purchases. And you're just, uh, you kept it very basic for me, right? We're doing a 10 property package, which I love. I love doing the 10 property package because it allows us to really dig deep and, uh, you know, go back and forth. You know, you guys are seasoned investors. You understand it's not about one door. You already got 28 and you're ready to buy more, right? Um, it's, it's a long-term process. So you kept everything kind of vague for me, just kind of, you know, letting me loose, seeing what I could break to you. And then uh, we're going to redirect after this possibly. Maybe what I found for you today is exactly what you're looking for. Maybe some deviations are needed. And that's why when we do these 10 property packages, I usually like to do two, sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three, but most of the time two, right? It's one to three per video properties, right? One to three properties per video, typically two. And then I, I like to work back and forth with you guys, get some feedback and, uh, you know, get more detail of, of what you're looking for. But based upon uh, your emails to me and, and what I think, uh, you know, you know what I'm, I'm trying to pick up what you're putting down. And I see you guys as investors that, uh, you know, you know what you're doing. You've been in the game. You understand the riffraff and what you like and what you don't like. And you don't want to deal with the riffraff of high risk rental properties. You just want something that's uh, pretty low risk. You, you know, you want to make some cash flow. You know what's a good deal. You know it's not a good deal. You're not chasing cash flow into the hood. I'm sure you've probably, being as seasoned as you are, you've probably dealt with that. And you just want something simple uh, to invest in funds, grow your portfolio. So with that said, I targeted two properties in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio called Maple Heights. I think Maple Heights is is going to be right up you guys' alley. Both of these are single family homes. And if you guys check out the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, anybody out there watching this show live on Holton Wise TV, 
Well, it's actually not live. I mean, it's live for you, I guess. But I sent this show to Bob and Erica probably 90 days ago. So these deals are no longer available. I only release them on Holton Wise TV after all the dust has settled. But anybody else out there, you know, your opportunity to learn from Bob and Erica working with me. Check out the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. I've graded all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale based upon risk. And uh, I've graded official, the official grade for Maple Heights is a C. But truth be told, it's like a high C, right? If we're going to start splitting hairs here, it's probably a C plus or a B minus. You know, I don't want to get into all that crap. C, C plus, B minus B. You know, it's six to one, half dozen the other. It's, you know, it's, you know, everything is open interpretation. But more or less, you know, the other areas in Cleveland proper that I've graded as a C, alongside Maple Heights. Maple Heights is going to have lower level of risk, a newer housing stock. The housing stock, you're going to see like a lot of 1950s build uh, type stuff versus the really old stuff in Cleveland proper, like 1910, 1920s type build. And I think the tenant base is a little bit uh, less risky. So, you know, just picking up what you guys are putting down, I just felt like uh, some low risk, low BS properties would uh, make some sense for you two folks, right? So the first one, 18408 Raymond Street, Maple Heights, 44137. This has been on the market approximately a month, listed for $45,000. Now we don't have too much to go off of, but you know, just a nice home here. The yard is a little sloppy, a little messy. Uh, but other than that, they haven't given us too much to go off of as far as what the listing agents have said. Current tenant rent is eight twenty-five dollars a month. Need a minimum 24-hour notice to show. Do not disturb tenant. Just needs a good cleanup and a few minor repairs. Property being sold as is. And then they're saying the information they have is per the county auditor website. Now, this property, this is listed. Uh, the agents who told us all that. They are a Coldwell Banker Schmidt Realty agent. And um, there's some things, there's some hints that I've been uh, picking up from this listing, which some of them are frustrating. Some of them may seem frustrating, but they're actually good. Uh, the, first, the first hint, uh, there is no notice, no mention of the point of sale inspection report. Now, in the show notes below, I've got a video that breaks down exactly what the point of sale inspection report is in a nutshell. So if you want more information, check that out. But in a nutshell, there's several uh, suburbs in the Cleveland market that every time a property is sold, the city has to come out, issue violations, and then you as the buyer need to either assume those or the seller has to fix them. Now they've made it clear they're, they're not willing to do any repairs. They want to sell it as is. But what's very, very frustrating is they, they may haven't made a mention. It doesn't appear that they've ordered that yet. So we're going to be into some unknowns. And this is a pain in the ass. I could uh, see deals, you know, sometimes the deals fall apart on this. Uh, but we're going to have to work with it. See, here's the thing. Most agents, right, 99.5% of the agents, they're not usually working in the rental game. They're mostly agents who deal with owner-occupied buyers and sellers, right? And the, the municipalities here in the Cleveland market, okay, that have these point of sale requirements, there's only a few. And they're primarily all suburbs of Cleveland, inner rig suburbs that are targeted by investors, right? The majority of the owner occupied folks that a lot of these agents are primarily working with tend to live in like the B or A grade suburbs, right? You guys don't hear me talking a lot about the A grade suburbs in the Cleveland market because you know, none of those make sense, right? You guys are not living in Phoenix, Arizona, coming to Cleveland, Ohio to buy rental properties if, if you're looking for four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars 500000 dollars $600,000 single family homes, right? You're not coming to Cleveland to do that. So we don't usually talk about those on the show because, you know, that's just not what investors are looking for. Maybe, maybe some of you folks out there didn't know we have four, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000 single family homes in Cleveland, but we do. Not all of us live in $50,000 homes, okay? There are folks here in Cleveland, uh, just like everywhere else in the world, that they're making, you know, six figures and up, and we're living in those types of neighborhoods. But uh, what we have here is, is a bunch of low-cost stuff in our B and C and uh, D and F neighborhoods. That's what attracts folks like you. So if you take a regular real estate agent, I would say the pri primarily 
you know, they're, they're selling a lot of owner occupied stuff. It's like 250,000 and up into those four five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollar ranges I'm talking about. So maybe they're not familiar with doing a lot of assets in Maple Heights. Perhaps, you know, their client is somebody that uh, maybe this was their starter home many years ago and then they moved into their nice fancy suburb and now they realize they don't want to be a landlord. Now they're finally selling it. And this particular agent, maybe they are not aware of this point of sale. Cause if you don't work in these types of neighborhoods, you wouldn't know. Cause it's, it's not, you're not going to, this is unheard of in A class neighborhoods, right? So perhaps they don't know. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to write our offer contingent on your review of this point of sale inspection report. Now here's the other thing too. I'm making an assumption that maybe that agent doesn't know. The other scenario is you get a lot of these sellers that maybe they're, they're not willing to, to do the point of sale inspection report because once you pull a point of sale inspection report, whether or not you sell it, the city makes you fix the violations in the allotted time they give you. And some sellers, they're stubborn and they don't comprehend selling real estate. They don't understand how the game works and they don't understand that it's hard to sell a property when there's unknowns out there. So they're like, oh, after we get an offer, then we'll do the point of sale. Well, they've made it clear that they're not willing to fix anything. I mean, if you're willing to fix the whole point of sale, that's fine. Uh, but you're telling us we have to fix it as buyers, but we don't know what we have to fix. So who the hell is going to totally give you a clean offer uh, agreeing to fix something that we don't know the cost is, right? So if it's that scenario, it could be frustrating um, to not have all the info, but that's, you know, maybe that's what pushes people away from doing these deals. And that's what keeps the price down because the price is damn low, dude, right? I mean, 45K and we've already got a tenant in there paying 825 a month. So that's 9,900 a year coming in. And as far as what I think we could possibly do, what I'd like to do, our strategy, I would try to get it a little cheaper. I don't know if there's a lot of people bidding on it, especially with the unknowns. I would like to target the price of $40,000 for you. I would like to pick this sucker up at 40 k and we're going to make it contingent on A, your own third-party home inspection because we don't have a lot of photos to go off of. And hey, that's not a red flag. That's just, you know, that's working with tenants, man. Like I said, I, I got a hunch that this particular agent isn't probably used to dealing with rentals. And man, tenants are tough. Tenants are rough. They don't like you coming in their house, especially not now during the coronavirus outbreak. So uh, we got some unknowns, but like I said, that's why I think we can keep that price low. That's why I think we could target the 40K. In addition to your own third party home, third party home inspection, which is you know pretty standard due diligence stuff. I want to make this contingent on your review of that point of sale inspection report. So, you know, we'll put the offer out there. Hey, you know, we just want regular due diligence. We want to know the exact condition of this home with our own third party home inspector. And we want to know what exactly you're asking us to assume. So if this POS comes back and Maple Heights wants you to do $25,000 worth of repairs, you know, the deal don't seem as hot as if they only want you to do a few grand. What I'm seeing, going back to the photos, you know, they tend to, um, you know, want the outsides of these properties cleaned up. So I think there'll just be some minor, minor yard cleanup. They're probably going to, if I had to guess, they'll want you to clean up that yard and they'll probably have you like uh, power wash that garage. You can see some like, uh, you know, green, uh, I don't know what the hell you call that, mold and mildew, whatever the hell you want to call that. Coming up on the garage siding, maybe they'll have you power wash the uh, outside of the home. And uh, the driveway is just so muddy and wet in these pictures. It's hard to tell. Maybe there's cracks, maybe there's not. So as far as the total renovation costs, you know, you know, that fence, by the way, in one of the photos, the fence is falling down. I don't know if it's your fence or if the neighbor's fence. So we'll have to see what the city says. But nothing like blaringly expensive is out there uh, shooting me in the eye right now. But it, it's hard to, to tell what the city's going to want to do. And then, of course, they haven't seen the inside of the home. Not 100% sure. Uh, what Maple's doing as far as inside violations go with their POS stuff with the COVID-19 going on right now. It's a very fluid situation, right? Uh, the municipalities, you know, I mean, look, you guys are seasoned investors. You got 28, you know, portfolio. So you've dealt with uh, many municipalities. You've dealt with the government before. <laughs> they are definitely not organized and they are definitely not organized during this COVID-19 thing. So things are changing like daily, right? You know, things are going to change based on what employees you talk to. So I don't know. Uh, some municipalities have just said, hey, we'll just do exterior only. We ain't going inside anybody's house. Screw that. Some still want to do it. Some did, and then they didn't, and then they did. So uh, we have some unknowns that uh, you folks and myself are going to have to roll through. You guys and my staff are going to have to roll through. So this is probably not going to be the quickest, easiest closing, but 
I think it'll all be worth it when we figure it out. So contingent on inspection of your own private inspector, contingent on your review of the POS, we'll try to get them to order that POS and then we'll reevaluate, right? Now, assuming there's nothing major, maybe you spend a little bit of coin um, and maybe, you know, once we get that POS back, we reduce our price. Maybe if there's like 2K worth of stuff, you know, we'll try to get them to give us a 2K credit, right? And instead of 40, maybe we try to go down to 38, right? Uh, so with those unknowns, I, th I, th I think we stand in a good spot and you're going to make some money, right? You bring in 825, you know, just your normal expenses that you guys are very, very f familiar with. Repairs, maintenance, vacancy, non-payment, CapEx, taxes, insurance, water, sewer, lawn care, PM, right? Just the standard stuff you get on these properties, operating these properties. I don't need to go through them. You guys know what they are. You know, I anticipate we're going to spend 516 of that 825. So that's going to leave you guys with an NOI of 309 or 3708 a year on average, right? So if we picked it up at 40K, this should be a 9.3 cap. Now, I know you guys are looking to pay cash, which is also another reason I think we can get that nice price. But if you did want to finance it with a 30-year loan, right, you'd only need to put down 10, and then they'd give you that 30K loan, teeny payment, 126. It turned into a 22% cash on cash return as it sits right now. But here's the other cool thing, right? I like Maple Heights. And the reason I like it is we get these nice stable tenants, but hey man, other cool thing is the rents are, are pretty well. The price to rent ratio is great. 825 is ridiculously cheap for a nice uh, property like this. 1950s build this is actually built in 47 to be exact. This property should rent for a lot more. This property should absolutely rent for a thousand bucks a month. No questions asked. And that would be with a Section 8 tenant or a cash paying tenant, right? They both pay about that price. So you'd have your pick, right, of how you want to handle it. I know you guys are semi open to Section 8, whatever makes sense. I like Section 8 quite a bit just because we tend to get longer tenancies. Uh, and the folks really, uh, you know, they just, you give them a nice, you know, after this tenant moves out, look tenants been in there, you know, there's no scenario where we're just slapping a new tenant in there, uh, raising their own 75 with a brand new tenant, not doing any turnovers, right? We're going to have to go and make it look nice, right? Probably spend like five to 10 K sprucing it up, doing some premium upgrades in that kitchen, but then we're easily going to get those thousand dollar a month tenants moving into this thing. And there's a ton of extra meat on the bone for you guys at that point. It's going to make even more than it currently does. Uh, but you know, I don't know when we'll have to do that. Maybe this current tenant's great and they stay and we just slowly increase their rents. Maybe they suck and we got a victim in six months. I don't know. That's another unknown. But what I like, I like the tenant base and I know long term this is gonna be a hell of a producer for you. Just like a, you know, nice just chugging along, consistent producer. And that's why I tend to like going section eight. Um because it's just, it, it, it keeps things even more consistent, right? Isn't that a high risk neighborhood? But you know. Every once in a while, people lose their jobs, things of that nature. You know, our tenants don't always make the best of life decisions. So, you know, evictions are a part of the game or turnovers are a part of the game. Maybe they, you know, don't get evicted, but they move out to find something cheaper or boyfriend and girlfriend break up and they want to move out, blah, 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 blah. I just tend to like the ghost section eight because I think we're always on the top. We get a premium for the rents. And I just, I feel like people stay a lot longer and you really don't have the worry of that money not coming in. It's very rare folks get kicked off the Section 8 program. So my my idea would be to ride this current tenant out as long as humanly possible, making teeny tiny rental increases. Then when they do eventually move out, spend the coin to, to flip the unit, get the unit looking as nice as humanly possible, present the very best product to the tenant, you know, the tenant uh, market, right? The tenant base, rather, that's the word I'm trying to get out. And then uh, slap yourself in there, a $1,000 a month tenant, and then just, you know, set it and forget it, right? Not much is going to happen after that. Uh, what we need to do now, Bob and Erica, let's go to a word from the sponsors of today's show. Allow me to get a little drink of water, and then we're going to get into the second Maple Heights property I found for you. G'day, everyone. It's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. 
U.S. Reeb is a full-service turnkey provider offering investors the opportunity to purchase single-family and multifamily investment properties in Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and Kansas City, Missouri. The purchase process is seamless, from reserving a property to obtaining financing, inspections, and insurance referrals, U.S. Reap has a dedicated team in place to manage the process from start to finish. In addition, U.S. Reap is also directly integrated with its own private placement fund for accredited investors. The fund seeks to raise $10 million to capitalize on the repositioning of distressed single-family and multifamily real estate. Hey, Bob and Erica, let's jump right into the second one. 5656 Lafayette Drive, Maple Heights 44137. This has been on the market for quite some time, 167 days. This is listed by Reds Realty for $51,250. And this particular listing, uh, I believe it originally had a tenant and um, I think like it was just, they were having trouble moving it, I believe was what happened. Uh, and then the tenant finally moved out and then they did some repairs. I think they took it off the market for a minute and now it's up, ready to go, a vacant. They did a nice little refresh in here. It doesn't look too bad, right? You got the uh, neutral colored walls, you got the carpet, you know, things look pretty good. I don't think we're going to need to do anything major, but I did put in this analysis a little rehab budget okay i think it's listed at 51,250 it's you know everything's looking pretty good i think the seller is probably going to stick close to that price because they absolutely should i mean they got a pretty nice property here so I, I think we could probably since you guys are paying cash probably squeeze out a nice price of 48k and everything looks good but i've put in here an eight thousand dollar renovation budget and the reason being is i would like to take that kitchen which looks a little dated um, and I would like to do some upgrades in that kitchen. Same thing with the bathroom. Nothing like major, okay? Like, I like the tile surround of the tub. I like the floor. But, you know, I like to get that vanity out of there. That's still an old vanity. And back to the kitchen, you know, let's get a nicer looking countertop in there. Let's try to make it look good. And then the rest of that, I'm factoring in to the rest of the unit because, look, they it looks good from these photos okay but when you actually jump into these properties and you're physically in there you know listing photos and i'm sure you two know this listing photos can be deceiving they make it look really really good but then you get up close and there's scuffs here there's scuffs there there's this wrong there's that wrong and then the inspectors get into the property and maybe the windows don't stay open or this or that so this $8,000 is just like a buffer, right? This is to include a little bit of cosmetic upgrades throughout the unit, specifically the kitchen and the bath, and maybe a couple unknowns that we don't necessarily see and are not made completely visually apparent to us, right? You guys, you know, you guys get it, right? You guys know, unless like a full-fledged turnkey reno just took place, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of this or a little bit of that you got to take care of. And in addition to that, you know, this is another listing where, the listing agents, they haven't made any mention of the point of sale. So I'm assuming the seller don't want to do the point of sale. So it's going to be something we're going to want to write this contingent on third party home inspection and review the point of sale inspection report. So between the minor stuff, the things I'm accounting for that uh, we probably can't see from the photos that I'm sure are there, kitchen's baths looking nicer, and maybe a couple little things on the, on the POS, you know, I think 8K is, is a nice little buffer for us. So if we can take it down at 48, put 8K into it, we're going to be all in for 56. And then boom, we're going right to that $1,000 a month tenant, right? Just like the other property. That's what the market value is for these types of rentals. We're not going to mess around with a lower, lower rent paying tenant right now. So we got to spend a little money up front to get us a new tenant, but boom, we'll be right at that 8K. So bringing in $12,000 a year of that $12,000 a year, we got our you know, our normal cat costs, repairs and maintenance, vacancy and non-payment, CapEx, something I want to touch on real quick, because, uh, you know, I know the weather and things are so much different uh, in Phoenix as they are here in Cleveland, right? As far as the roofs we have, these roofs are going to last approximately 30 years out here in the Cleveland market. And both of these properties that I've shown to you, they're probably going to be about $5,000 roofs. Uh, and then um, just in case like costs are different, hot water tanks are going to run you about $1,000 here. 
and uh, they're going to last approximately 15 years. Furnaces, 3,000 last about 30 years like those roofs. So in case things are a little bit different in the markets you're investing in, I just wanted to get that out there. But other than that, just, you know, standard stuff you guys are very well familiar with. Taxes, of course, you got to pay insurance. We can help you with your insurance. By the way, we own a farmer's insurance office. And not only are we appointed with farmers, we're appointed with several other third-party insurance firms, you know, small little niche firms that you guys may not have heard of. So we're able to uh, really take your premiums and lower them, right? We should be able to insure this for only 80 bucks a month. So, you know, Bob and Erica, if you guys would like us to quote uh, any of your other 28 properties, we can do that completely free of charge and obligation, but I have a hunch that we'll be able to get your premiums down on the rest of those. And everybody else who's watching this, if you got rental properties out there, you know, have my team quote you guys. We might be able to save you a few hundred bucks a year, right? Uh, water and sewer, you know, the deal, 75, you're going to have to pay that uh, for your tenants, even though it's a single, you know, maybe you don't know the deal, actually. Maybe that's different in your market. So what you're going to want to do so you're going to want to go to our property management FAC. I've explained why you have to pay water sewer here in the Cleveland markets. It don't make no sense, uh, but that is the hand we were dealt with. So in that FAC, we explain exactly why. Uh, tenants, they can cut that grass though. So of that 12000 a year this thing's bringing in, I anticipate you guys are going to spend an average of sixty. $372, which is going to leave us with a monthly NOI of $469, just over $5,500 for the year. Okay, that's a 10 cap. And again, you guys are cash buyers, but if you decided you wanted to finance it, teeny mortgage, $36K, you got to put $12,000 down. Now, as far as the cash on cash return, don't forget. We also had to factor in the $8,000 buffer I've placed in this for reno. So if you did finance it and put that 8K in and then got yourself a $1,000 month tenant, that brings this property up to a 19% cash on cash return. So I think this is a solid deal. I think Raymond is a solid deal. I think this is a solid low risk neighborhood. And like I said, you know, at the top of the show, you guys left things kind of open for me. So you know, the plan was to get this video out, see what you guys think of what I'm saying. Maybe you're like, hell yeah, both those deals make some sense, James. Let's make moves on them. You know, we'll work together. We'll write those offers. We'll make them contingent on the inspection reports, contingent on the review of those POSs. And then when we get the POS reports in, we'll look at that. We'll look at your inspection report. We'll go back and forth and we'll continue the negotiation with those sellers. Um, if for some reason this is not what you were picturing, not what you were thinking, let me know. Give me a... Uh, you know, take what I've done here and let me know where you'd like to see me shift things moving forward on the other eight properties we're going to look at. And together, uh, we'll come up with the plan that makes the most sense for you folks. And uh, we'll get you guys a nice little portfolio here in Cleveland to add to the rest of your portfolio. For the rest of you, if you're out there and you're interested in working with me and my team, just like Bob and Erica are doing right now, I want you to go to holdenwise.com, click the property search for sale tab. Click the MLS search and nails to show, order yourself a package. They're doing the 10 property package. And we all, like I said, I can't say it enough. I think that's the very best package. You're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. Number one, it's cheaper per property. Number two, it allows a lot of back and forth, a real long-term working relationship because it's not about one property, right? It's not about two properties. It's about building a business, building a business with a ton of income stream ton of income streams and that takes time and that takes a lot of going back and forth. So that's why y'all are best served to get that 10 property package. But that's all I've got for today's show. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Over 50% of those living in the greater Memphis area rent their home. This fact combined with the high price to rent ratio is why Forbes rates Memphis, Tennessee as one of the top real estate investment markets in the country. Memphis Investment Properties and their sister property management company, Reedy & Company Realtors, are among the largest and most trusted turnkey operations in this market. 
With over 30 years in business, a portfolio consisting of more than 2,700 active rentals, and an impeccable track record renovating over 6,000 single-family homes, it's no surprise they are one of the most reputable turnkey operations in the United States. RentTech Direct provides you with an easy-to-use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With RentTech Direct, you'll also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and RentTech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.